Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. As a matter of fact, Max Frisch's play The Fire Raisers is so short that a summary is hardly necessary, but then again, houses are burning again in Germany, and this is a play about what happens if you just stand by. Our cast are Gottlieb Biedermann, a very harmless manufacturer of hair tonic who likes to kick those who can't defend themselves and look away when injustice is going on, but apart from that, he's a model citizen. His wife Babette worries a lot more than her husband about things, but thinks that man's natural dominance over women is Gottlieb's uh, God's will. Then there's the maid Anna, who has to cope with the dubious leadership talents of her employer, especially when faced with unbidden guests such as the wrestler Schmitz, a man of manners and muscle who is simply irresistible. His pal Eisenring, a former waiter who has still got a dinner jacket and knows his way around a wine cellar. And finally, a doctor of philosophy who doesn't really get his say in the play, but in his stead, the chorus of firefighters, who in the manner of a chorus from an ancient Greek tragedy put their awe in at every turn of the play. As a matter of fact, the chorus starts the play, going, Stop smoking now, ladies and gentlemen, we are here to ensure fire protection. Fire is usually not a matter of fate, but a matter of mischief, which, however, is unquenchable. Biedermann is sitting in his living room with a cigar and his newspaper, but is fed up with reading. Fire raisers, wherever you look, sneak in as peddlers, they should all be hanged. And as if that wasn't enough, the maid Anna disturbs him. There's someone to see you, chuck him out, but someone has already come in, Mr. Biedermann. Uh, without knocking? What are you doing here? My name is Schmitz, I'm not a peddler, but wrestler. Ah, I see, cigar? Yes, and a glass of wine, cold meat, caviar, whatever there is around. So the maid lays the table and the wrestler tucks in merrily. Um, there's also Mr. Knechtling, who you fired. He can take a lawyer if he wants, or go kill himself straight away. I don't mind, I can fire whoever I want. So she walks away. He goes, but please don't think me inhumane. I'd never think that, because if you were inhumane, you wouldn't offer me to spend the night in your attic. And he goes, uh, exactly, but don't tell my wife, okay? And promise me you're not a fire raiser, okay? And Schmitz bursts out with laughter before going up to the attic and sleeping. Then the chorus enters going, By the way, if there's trouble, call 999 in the UK or 911 in the USA. When Mrs. Biedermann comes in going, There's someone in the attic, isn't there? And the firefighters go, No idea, sorry, Gottlieb! But Gottlieb doesn't answer because he's taken sleeping pills. In the morning, however, she tackles him going, A. Who is the person in our attic? And B. Why did you fire Mr. Knechtling? Oh, uh, B, because he wanted money. Can't stand greedy employees, so I threw him out. Indeed, I'm throwing out the people in the attic. They're not fire raisers. Still. Okay. But there's Schmitz already going, you want to throw me out, don't you? Well, uh, no. Well, I'm used to it, really. It's always the same. No, I don't want to throw you out. Go on, do. No. And he's reached his goal. Ding dong. There's someone in a dinner jacket. Ah, that's Willie. Who's Willie? And the chorus comes in again saying, Hawa, 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 there's two of them already. These two are occupied with heavy work in the attic on the next morning, when Biedermann climbs his staircase, infuriated, and addresses them. Mr. Schmitz, you are to pack your things immediately. All night long this noise over our heads. I'm throwing you out now. And Eisenring joins in. That's so incredibly impertinent of you. What are you doing? Huh? Who are you? Why is there two of you all of a sudden? And what are these barrels doing here? They've indeed put in quite a number of barrels in the attic. Um, my name is Eisenring. Those are my barrels and there's petrol in them. I could have hardly left them in the street, could I? What? Petrol? Then suddenly a policeman is standing behind him. Mr. Biedermann. Ah, what is it? Well, <coughs> your former employee Knechtling has killed himself and I've got a couple of questions. Ah, uh, okay. And what's in these barrels? And he's embarrassed and goes, uh, hair tonic. And he's gone and leaves the good people to carry on with their hard work. On the way to his lawyer, however, the chorus of firefighters accost him, saying, Beware! Beware! Beware what? What's the petrol doing in your attic, Mr. Biedermann? That's private, isn't it? Oh, sorry, we didn't want to trespass your privacy. And anyway, couldn't we have a little more faith in mankind, please? Oh, but we'll do. And apart from that, I'll be inviting everybody to dinner tonight. There'll be a goose, which is his latest idea. So he goes up to the attic again, where Eisenring is just measuring the fuse, saying, Hold this, will you? And Biedermann holds this, going, uh, And what is this? That's the fuse. And somewhere, yes, there's got to be the detonator caps. Ha <laughs> ha, that's really funny. Why don't you join us for dinner tonight as friends? Yeah, sure, as soon as we're done, because, you you know, tomorrow we won't be here anymore. Ha ha ha, I'll leave the fuse here. And Eisenring calls Dr. Phil, 
upon which the doctor appears. You are to stand watch here. We are going down for dinner. Nobody is to touch anything. The chorus of the firefighters adds, Oh, oh, it's fern tonight. This dry, fire-friendly wind from the Alps. The maid Anna has taken great care to lay the table in a festive way in the living room, but Peterman goes tilt when he sees this. Clear off this pretentious stuff, but we always have this. These are simple people, so she's got to clear away all this stuff and put the bird on the table in the frying pan. In the meantime, Biedermann goes into the cellar to get a bottle of wine, and when he comes back, he addresses the audience, saying, I'm not stupid, you know, I'm well aware of the fact that these are fire raisers, but I'm telling you something. He who boozeth playeth not with fire. And all this disturbs him now is the widow Knechtling, who's hovering about in the background and wants to talk to him. Get out, you can talk to my legal department. I've got nothing to say to you. So he chucks her out, and then his guests are arriving, having put on their best clothes for the occasion, the only ones they have. And Biedermann tries to cheer up uh, the atmosphere. Everyone, please help themselves. We are very simple people. Ah, would have been nice to have some tablecloths for a change, or a silver cutlery like we used to have. Anna! And the maid enters. Rig it up. But I've just taken everything out. Tut, tut, get the stuff. So she brings in all the consumer garbage again. That's so nice, just like in the restaurant I used to work in until it burnt down. What? So nice, just like in the theatre I used to work in until it burnt down. What? It's true, I know how to act. And he snatches the damask tablecloth Anna has just brought in and plays a ghost, going, Every man, Biederman, I am the ghost of Knechtling. And Mrs. Biedermann goes, Wah! And Biedermann goes, Poo! And Eisenring chides him, That's enough of your sick jokes, Schmitz. But they go on singing, and you know what they say, Where there's song you can safely stay, Until the firefighter sirens go off. What's this? Fire raises! Stop shouting. No, let's talk about this. This is a diversion for the firefighters in the suburbs, though they won't be here in time later on. No, seriously. I'm serious. We're fire raisers. No, you're my friends. No, we're not. And we've got to go now. Please stay. Can't I offer you anything? Uh, we need matches, as a matter of fact. So he gives them a matchbox and off they walk. Then the Doctor of Philosophy enters and delivers a speech which he has been rehearsing. I dissociate myself from this, but at this point his speech is drowned by sirens and explosions and a blazing fire. Nobody understands a word of what he's saying. The Biedermanns remain alone and he goes, luckily it's not at our place. But the matches! Yeah, of course I gave them matches. If they'd be real fire raisers, they'd have them, wouldn't they? And the chorus closes the play, saying, what burns best is stupidity. And then the stage goes, boom! And of course the chorus is right. Because if you look away, if fire raisers creep into the neighborhood, you pass them the matchbox. And if you are silent when Pegida, IFD and other right-wing extremists are demonstrating, you haven't deserved freedom and democracy. And this, dear congregation, was the fire raisers by Max Frisch.